I hope you all had a good lunch. So a quick show of hands. Who knows what distributed tracing is? Here it is. OK, that's a fair number of you. Um, so my name is Ryan. I'm a site reliability engineer at Grab. And I'm going to be sharing with you guys on how we do distributed tracing at Grab. So before we start, I'd like to share with you guys a story, a story of an on-call engineer. So once upon a time, there was an on-call engineer that goes by the name Lee. Meet Lee. And on a, lovely, on a very lovely Saturday night, while Lee was preparing to go out to get dinner and drinks with his friends, especially after a long week at work, his phone rings. And it's a phone call from his company's alerting system. And the alert goes, alert, high error rate on create booking API. So Lee, being the responsible engineer that he is, rushes to his laptop, opens up all his monitoring dashboards, starts looking at the logs, only to find out that it is actually not his system. It's one other system that he is calling that is causing the problem. So he calls up the next engineer. The second engineer comes online, repeats the same thing, only to find out that, OK, it's the third system. So they call up the third engineer. But luckily, this time they, they know that it's definitely the third system that is experiencing the problem. So they work together to fix it. Two hours later, they managed to fix the issue. Everybody is happy, except that Lee, he's now having dinner alone on a Saturday night. Uh. So how does the story of an on-call engineer relate to distributed tracing? If Lee and his colleagues were to have implemented distributed tracing, they would actually get something like this. They would, have, they would be able to see that this request starts from the API service, it calls the fare service, it calls the off service, and it calls the booking service. And in the end, this is actually a successful request. And if you, if you wanted to optimize this particular request, you would probably look at the fare request, because from this graph, you know that it is the fare service that is taking up the most time. So if distributed tracing is so great, why isn't everybody already using it? And I think the answer there is because although microservices have been, is, is now the normal way of life, it, has, it hasn't always been the case. Like we actually had a lot of request tracing tools in the monolithic world. It is just that the tools doesn't work for microservices. And the next thing is that when you are implementing your distributed tracing system, you want to have a system that is vendor neutral. So when your vendor decides to discontinue a product, you can still use your distributed tracing and it won't disappear overnight. Last, but definitely not least, is that you want, you want to be able to trace your requests from, from your brand new fancy Go service to your legacy systems. Because if you are not able to trace through your legacy systems, anything that goes through them basically just disappears. And this is where something like open tracing comes in. Open so what is open tracing? Open tracing is an open source vendor neutral standard. And on a high level, open tracing is basically a vendor neutral set of APIs and, standard, and data definitions that work across platforms. And depending on the tracer implementation that you have, your tracing platform can actually do things that are completely different from the next. And the way that I think about a trace in open tracing is that a trace is basically a directed acyclic graph where every single node on the graph is equivalent to a span. And the span is a basic unit of open tracing. However, because of time constraints, I won't be diving deep into the details of open tracing. But know this in open tracing, you can add logs to a span. You can also add key value pairs to a span, and they are known as tags or baggage. So for the most interesting part of the talk, how does Grab actually use open tracing to do distributed tracing? One of the things that a lot of gophers in Grab believes in is that we do not like depending on something that we do not have full control over. And this includes the open tracing API. So what we ended up doing is that we wrote our own tracer API that wraps the open tracing API. The main reason for doing this is because <coughs> 
if at any point in time in the future we decide that open tracing doesn't completely fulfill our needs and we need to extend it to just something that is specific to our use case, we can actually do that very easily. So the Tracer API covers the input portion of open tracing. How do we actually get data out of it? To get data out of it, we actually, we actually implemented our own Tracer implementation and it actually wraps the basic Tracer-Go package. Basic Tracer-Go is an open source Tracer implementation. And the interesting thing about it is that it doesn't define the output format and it just provides you with a recorder interface. So what we ended up doing there is that we wrote our own T recorder. And if you guys are familiar with the T command in Linux, you probably know what this does. It takes the output from Basic Tracer-Go and then it splits the output to two different destinations as of right now. The first destination is, code, is a code storage recorder, and the second destination is like that. The code storage recorder is basically a place where we just put our open tracing data so that we can use it for future data analysis. And Lightstep, well, Lightstep is a SaaS that focuses on using your distributed tracing data to do performance monitoring, such as SLM monitoring, uh, latency monitoring, and so on. So why did we go with Lightstep instead of building our own tracing setup? Well, when you're first starting out a new initiative like distributed tracing, you don't want to have to worry about your, your tracing monitoring system too much, and it just made sense for us to do this. Especially when you have such when you have a small team that is like the SRE team at Grab. <coughs> now, this is where I want to thank Ian for talking about context because he's just saved me so much time. So in Go, Go doesn't have the idea of a request store or a thread local. So what you have what you end up doing is that you would use the context.context pack, context.context uh, context struct to propagate tracing information from one function to another. And if you look at this code example, you can see that the HTTP request has a context struct that is embedded in it. So what we did there is that we took that context struct, we created a span, and then we also created a child context format. And for all the subsequent, subsequent function calls, we are basically just passing the child context into the function, and then we are creating spans inside the function. Now, if I were to tell you that implementing distributed tracing at Grab was a walk in the park, I'll, be, I'll obviously be lying to you guys. So this is some of the stuff that we, some of the challenges that we have faced and some of the things that we have learned uh, in our journey. The first thing is that adding distributed tracing to an existing system is hard. It is really, really hard. So if, it's, so if this is the only thing that you take away from my talk today, please consider using context.context .context for in your code base so that when you decide that you want to do distributed tracing in your systems in the future, it just becomes one or two lines of code instead of trying to search through your entire code base to do search and replace. And now, and since you guys already have heard about context.context .context from Ian, I'm just gonna skip the next part. Now, the next thing. This, if you were to decide that you wanted to convince your colleagues to do distributed tracing in your company, this is going to make or break your distributed tracing effort. The, um, if you were to implement distributed tracing and you decided that you want to create a span for every single function, I'm going to tell you to not do that. Because if you start tracing functions like a function that does if 1 plus 1 equals 2 return true, you're just going to have so much noise in your traces that it becomes unusable. And a monitoring system that creates a creates a lot of noise, it's a monitoring system that you don't pay attention to. After you have all that, after you started writing traces for a bunch of your functions, you will notice that now you have a line of code for tracing, you have a line of code for logging, and you have a line of code for metrics. That is just a lot of code for instrumentation. And it is my personal opinion that Tracing is actually a superset of metrics and logging in the context of a request. So if you have the right setup, like the one that we have, you can actually just transparently pipe your logs and your metrics to your existing systems. And then you can just have one line of tracing code instead of having three different setups. 
Now, those were just limitations on how to implement tra distributed tracing. Now, I'm going to share with you guys some limitations that open tracing itself has. Because open tracing aims to be a vendor neutral and flexible system, there, there are actually drawbacks with it. So, the first one is that there is no way for you to actually take a trace ID or a span ID out from open tracing and put it into your logging solutions. So you can you can take a span tra take a trace ID, write it into your logs and correlate your traces and your logs that way. What we ended up doing there is that we generated a unique ID, we add the unique ID as a tag to open tracing, and then we write the unique ID to our logs. That is how we sort of correlate the traces and the logs. The next limitation that I think open tracing has is that open tracing also doesn't define a wire format. So depending on the tracer implementation that you use, it can, either, it can, it can use all sorts of different formats to transfer the tracing information between, from one service to another. The easiest way to deal with this problem is basically to use the same tracer implementation on both sites, both services. And the harder way of doing that is basically to write a tracer implementation that understands one or more wire format. And that is the end of my presentation. Does anybody have any questions?